I'm Steve Wiggins, and this is the Groundworks Ministries podcast. Today we're reading from the book of Esther, chapter 1, so let's focus on verses 8 through 12. In accordance with the law, the drinking was not compulsory, for so the king had ordered all the officers of his household that they should do according to each man's pleasure. Queen Vashti also made a feast for the women in the royal palace, which belonged to King Ahasuerus. On the seventh day, when the heart of the king was merry with wine, I think we know what that means, he commanded uh, Mehuman, Biztha, Harbona, Bigtha, uh, Abag- Abagatha, uh, Zether, and Carcass, seven eunuchs who served in his presence, the presence of King Ahasuerus, to bring Queen Vashti before the king, wearing her royal crown in order to show her beauty to the people and the officials, for she was beautiful to behold. But Queen Vashti refused to come at the king's command, brought by his eunuchs. Therefore, the king was furious, and his anger burned within him. Now, one thing you can say about King Ahasuerus, he knew how to throw a kegger. (laughs) 180 days of partying, as if that wasn't enough. So we decided to top it off with seven more days, a banquet featuring an open bar. Now, on the last day of this soiree, the king decided to show off his trophy queen. And the problem was the queen was so over it. (laughs) She did not want to come. So the headlines of the paper read, Queen Cools and the King is Ablaze. It sounded like the plot for a great movie based on a true story, but how will it end? Well, you'll have to keep reading. It is relevant to our generation, I believe, absolutely. We don't catch a glimpse of the Lord's involvement until chapter 2, but that is precisely where we find the lesson for today. Even when we cannot see God, He is ever-present, accomplishing His purposes according to His wills, even within the cabinets of foreign governments. Some people believe that a person must be righteous in order to be used by God, but that is not true, especially in today's passage. God is never hindered by anyone or anything. Now, if you want to please God as He uses you, well then, you'd better be seeking and obeying His Word. But just know that God can use you either way, but you don't get the benefit necessarily. In today's chapter, God uses the most worldly of people in the midst of a completely decadent scenario. All so he can position his servants where they can exert maximum influence for his kingdom. So drunken pagan kings and obstinate queens, well, they may seem like the top of society's food chain, the people we all wish that we were, but they're merely tools in the hands of the Lord. Perhaps God is distant to you, Uh, at least he seems that way, or maybe he seems like he's absent from your life. Maybe you wonder if God even knows your name or cares about your personal well-being. Whenever people feel that God is absent, or if they fail to perceive his power and his authority, well, they have a tendency to either lose hope or to arrogantly taunt the Lord. Now, neither of those reactions is justified because God is ever-present and He is Almighty. And because the Bible says that He is Lord, whether you believe it or not, He is there. Hebrews chapter 13 verse 5 says, Let our conduct be without covetousness. Be content with such things as you have. For He Himself has said, I will never leave nor forsake you. The generation of Jewish people who went into Babylonian exile could very well have felt abandoned and forsaken by God. While God may have been silent, He was still at work, and the Lord was orchestrating events to provide for His people's deliverance. So once again, do you feel alone and forsaken? Well, hold firmly to the truth of God's Word and cling to His promises, for He has promised to never leave or forsake you. He is with you even now. He cares, and He has a plan, and He has the power to deliver. I'm Steve Wiggins, and this is the Groundworks Ministries podcast. Groundworks Ministries operates entirely through financial donations from faithful people like yourself. 
And your giving to Groundworks Ministries transforms lives, and we really do need your giving now. Would you consider making a donation to Groundworks Ministries today? Like I say, your monthly support goes further than you could ever imagine because we are working toward the basis of revival in our nation. Donating is secure and it's easy at our website, groundworksministries.com. Now, another way to help is to tell people about Groundworks Ministries. Share these podcasts with friends and family and on your social media. And of course, you can always direct folks to our website, groundworksministries.com.